In this video, we will demonstrate the muscles and bones of the anterior forearm and elbow. Firstly, we'll look at these structures on a plastic model. Then we'll move on to demonstrating the surface anatomy of these bones and muscles on a real patient. And finally, we'll look at the relevant anatomy on an ultrasound. Throughout the video, we'll also discuss the relevance particularly of the antecubital fossa. We're going to demonstrate with the use of a model, the major bones are the elbow and forearm. The major bones that make up the elbow are the humerus, the ulna, and the radius. If we look at the bones in more detail, in the humerus, we have the medial epicondyle, the lateral epicondyle. If we move to the distal part of the joint, we have the head of the radius and the proximal end of the ulna. It's important to note that the head of the radius is the proximal end of the radius. In the distal portion of the forearm, the two important structures to be aware of are the styloid process of the radius and the head of the ulna. And it's important to note that the head of the ulna is in the distal portion of the forearm. We're going to use this plastic model to demonstrate the major muscles of the anterior forearm. There are four important muscles to identify on the model of the anterior forearm. These are pronator teres, flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus, and as we rotate the model around, flexi carpi ulnaris. When identifying these muscles here, it's important to follow their tendons, as we'll see the tendons on a real patient later. Now we're going to demonstrate some of the structures that we saw on a model on a real patient. The first structure that we can identify on our patient is the radial head. The easiest way to do this is to identify the lateral epicondyle of the humerus and move a centimetre or two distally. You'll know you're over the radial head because if you ask your patient to pronate and supinate their arm, you'll feel the rotation of the radial head underneath your fingers. The other bony prominence that is easily identifiable in the forearm is the ulnar head. This is seen in the distal part of the forearm, almost at the wrist. In the antecubital fossa, there are three veins that can be appreciated. The cephalic vein, the basilic vein, and the median cubital vein. The clinical relevance of the antecubital fossa is that it is by far and away the most common site for venipuncture. And that is because one of the three veins that we've listed is usually superficial and therefore easy to access. Finally, as we move down to the wrist, we can see the tendons of the muscles of the anterior forearm. We can see the tendon of flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus, and flexor carpi ulnaris. Now we'll move on to demonstrate an ultrasound of the antecubital fossa and the anterior forearm. So, on initial ultrasound of the antecubital fossa, you can quite nicely see a pulsatile vessel at the top of the screen. This is the brachial artery. I'm currently pressing, my, pressing the probe quite hard. If I release the pressure slightly, either side of the brachial artery, you can see two more lumens appear. These are veins, and we know this because they're easily compressible as I change the amount of pressure I put on with the probe. The main clinical use of ultrasound of the antecubital fossa is for obtaining intravenous access in challenging situations. Using this view, we could cannulate one of the veins on view reasonably easily. Now, if we move further down the arm, I place my transducer in the mid forearm, we can see lots of muscles.
and I'm just going to freeze the screen there. So there are lots of different things we can see on this screen. In the middle of the screen, the bright white, is the median nerve. Surrounding the median nerve are various muscles. These muscles are flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus. We can also see flexor carpi radialis. If we unfreeze the screen, the image will move slightly. But it's similar. Now, to demonstrate the movements of the muscles, we'll just ask our patient to wiggle his fingers. And you can see the movements in his flexor digitorum muscles. If we instead ask him to keep his fingers still, but flex his wrist, we can see the movement of flexor carpi radialis. In this video, we saw the bones and the muscles of the elbow and anterior forearm, firstly on a model and then on a real patient. We also saw ultrasound of the antecubital fossa and the muscles of the anterior forearm on ultrasound.